It's, it's one of those things, right? But you know what? That story is not unique. I've met a lot of people along the way who their first website or their first platform, they wanted to build a whole all singing, all dancing platform, yeah. you know, that, that answered a lot of these potential assumptions. <laughs> Paul from StarTech, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. We follow each other on Instagram for a while, I believe. Last couple of years. Yeah, from when you was in Dublin. Dublin yeah. yeah, that True. seems like a lifetime ago now. <laughs> you know what? It's always crazy. Time looking forward is like, oh, four years, that's a long way away. But four years looking back. Yeah, it's, it's it crazy. Like yeah, I forget sometimes when people say, when did you guys start? It's like mm. four years. I'm like, where'd that four years go? <laughs> it's crazy, it's nuts. So, so look, start, we, we'll get on to what you know, uh, Star Tech is all about, but mm. we want to chat about how you got there, which, which, is, which is the cool thing. So you started a business straight out of uni. Mm. What, was it, what was the business? Do you know, towards the end of uni, I had to make a decision where, do I want to go into full-time employment? Because I actually had a grad scheme offer right. on the table, looked good, 30K starting. I'm like, whew, that looks beautiful. Yeah. Or do I want to start something for myself, maybe hustle for like eight years before it really yeah. gets the, you know, before it actually gets started? I actually chose the harder option, which is, you know, yeah. I'm going to not do the grad scheme. I'm going to start a company. But at that time, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So because I've always been passionate about health, the first thing I started was a juicing company. Really? Yeah. I used to go to like different events. Like I did Nightingale Carnival, different festivals. Be like four of us, four juicers, juicing fresh juice. Very messy stuff, but yeah. people loved it. That's cool. Essentially, off the back of that, I did an event where I realized, hey, there's an opportunity in this event. So some of the people who I was coaching, I was doing weight loss coaching at the time, mm. were at the event, and they were strategically placed on each table. Okay. And the way people actually spoke to the person on the table, I realized, you know what, I can start a personal training online coaching platform. I know it's weird, but that's where the idea hit me. And, and what? So people would, people would video call in no, or to download? Some... Exactly, yeah. So what I did, I went, I set aside building this online platform where you can have two-way live video conferences with a personal trainer, with yep. a coach. Um, and then this particular coach could check your daily food logs, could check your daily exercise logs and make a comment. I was basically trying to reinvent the 20 part, reinvent the hour model of a personal trainer yep. to last a week. So you, as an employee, can stay motivated and stay knowledge, knowledgeable yeah, yeah. on what you're doing day to day through the platform. Through that whole journey, I, it, did, it did quite well initially. I got maybe a couple hundred users. Mm. I had about 46 personal trainers slash coaches. But actually getting it built was, was a nightmare. Really? Oh, the platform itself? Yeah, nightmare. The website? Website, hiring designers, hiring developers. The first set of people that I hired to build a beta, they built something for me <laughs> when it came time beta. to hiring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When it came time to hiring a, a CTO, someone to actually work in it more full time, mm. um, some sweat equity, they looked at the code and said, yeah, this is unusable. So the 4K investment that I put into the original, just to test the platform, Shit. complete waste of no money. No way. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things, right? But you know what, that story is not unique. I've met a lot of people along the way who their first website or their first platform, they wanted to build a whole all singing, all dancing platform. Yep. You know, that, that answered a lot of these potential assumptions and ended up losing money. Because that wasn't the end of my money losses, by the way. The second website I built, you know, after I started doing user, user testing and mm. actually asking for feedback from my actual user base, one thing I found was the website would work better as an application. Right. Because there was too much steps that created friction in order to actually speak to a personal trainer. You gotta go dong dongu.com, which is what it was called, dongu.com, yep. log in, go to your messages. If I'm if I just wanna find out if I should eat the cookie or not, after all tap, those tap, steps, you just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna eat the cookie. So people wanted the application. <laughs> Halfway through it when you figure it out. <laughs> oh, you just replied just now, oh mate. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. I mean? So that's exactly the journey really. The company automatically didn't end up working out. But because it got a little bit of press, a little a couple of people actually knew about the company, people were asking me, Oh, I wanna start my company. How do I get my branding done? How do I get my website done? And I didn't want people to make the same mistakes that I did. You've been through all that shit. I've been, yeah. I've been, you know what? When you're at the bottom, you're just, yeah. you're just swimming at the bottom. Like, hey, yeah. I can see the clouds all the way up there. But here, yeah, yeah it, was, it was very hard, if I'm honest with you guys. And, you know, a combination of things where I knew I, wanted to, I need to make some money. I need to make some side income. Mm. And that's where the idea for StarTech initially came from. It's like, you know what? I want to do something small initially, you know, have trustworthy designers where you can actually hire us and sleep at night. 
Yeah. You know, you know you're getting creative designs that actually propel your potential and company yeah. and, and they actually work and and it's good. Do you, you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's 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 the short long story of the start. That's interesting that, right? Because as a as a startup and as a business, as a say a first time founder, you generally don't know where, where to go. You don't know who to because let's say you, you you invested four grand in that in that website a lot of people out there four grand is like they're going that that can last me three and a half four months maybe more bootstrapping it mm -hmm. to survive but i'm going to risk it and, and, and trust this designer without even knowing are they any use or not mm -hmm. where, where did you find can you remember where you even found that the, the, the web designer do you know where you found them <laughs> where i found them bin? is not where <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know these these freelance websites um is it at that time it was called old desk They've actually rebranded now to Upwork. I don't uh, know if you want to put that in the Yeah, ground. we can. Yeah, 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 we can. <laughs> but yeah, that's where I found him. And yeah, terrible. Yeah. And, and uh, Fiverr.com, so other people use Fiverr.com. Yeah, Fiverr.com, you can get designers on there. Five quid. <laughs> five quid. It costs five quid, but it doesn't mean it'll actually work. Like when you learn more about the UX, UI, and how people actually use websites. Yeah then you realize most of that stuff is just garbage. Where do some businesses go wrong when it comes to, to branding initially and, and their whole branding and their message? Where, where, where's the common things? Where do people mess up? People see themselves as the target customer. Okay. Whereas actually going actually to your target customer to seeing what they like, seeing what their interests are and understanding who that particular person is, then branding for them, if you get what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. let's say a company now approaches us or a startup, they want to start a company. They automatically people see themselves as their target market. Whereas your target market exactly might be, I don't know, mothers, you know, between 35 to 45 who like going out with their kids. Having that balance between, you know, I love the logo, but my customers love it more and testing it with them yeah. is where a lot of people go wrong. Really? In my personal opinion, definitely. So they don't really know who their target is yeah. properly. Yeah. Everybody's winging it when they start. You yeah, know, a lot of people are winging it. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's interesting. So, so what way did you, so you're like, right, this is a clear issue, right? Mm. Without a doubt, it's a clear issue. And, and you were like, right, I have to solve this problem because I went through it. Mm. Where did you first, where did you first start? Is it hiring a designer you trusted or where did you first kind of go, right, this is the first step of building this? The first step was just speaking to people, you know, speaking to people that I've met along the journey and saying, hey, this is what I want to do. What are your thoughts? Are you interested? Mm. And speaking to a lot of different people, then finding potential right fits. Because you can have someone on paper that looks amazing, but whether you have good team dynamics or whether you actually work yeah. well together is different a different story. story. Yeah. Or whether they can actually deliver. A lot of people... <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> Which happened to me, because when I realised that I needed to build an application, I hired um, a CTO to actually help me build it. Right. And they said, yeah, they can do it. And I think due to my own... I wouldn't say insecurities, but due to my own lack of knowledge at the time, mm. the first person that said, I want to help you, I was like, yeah, yeah. open <laughs> arms. <laughs> Wasn't that for you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it took over a year to build the actual Shit. product. And after a year, we still didn't have anything. So the actual testing the people that you work with to see that if they're actually capable, that's something that I needed to do. So whilst I was building StarTech, I went to a lot of different events. I reached out to a lot of people on angel.co, which, which I think it was at the time. Yeah. There's a lot of designers, a lot of developers on there, co-founders lab. And then through that is that's when we started it. And I met one person who's pretty much introduced me to a few different designers. Really? Exactly, yeah. It's an interesting one. And so what is the, see, this, this is what people don't know either, right? If you, because there's everything like we said from Fiverr.com, five quid, it's going to be shit, not going to work properly, right? Mm. Right to huge, you know, agencies mm. around the corner in Shoreditch with massive offices are going to charge a fortune. Mm. What should someone expect to pay? They go, I have an idea for a website. I want something basic, but I want my branding on point. Mm. What can someone expect to pay, even between X and Y? Is there like a range people should be looking at? I think for a logo, it should start from about 200 quid. Yeah. For something that, you know, the thing is you wanna, it's a, it's a balance between testing your idea and knowing and starting how you wanna go on. So you can test your idea with something cheap, for example, you can pop up like a landing page, yeah. see if anybody signs up to actually give you their email. Then once you have your idea in line, then you can actually now make the actual investment. So uh, I remember the first company that I paid for a logo back in 2009, 2010, I paid 200 quid. Really? So I think that's a good basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good, it's a good number to start from. Because at least mm. then it's not, you know, it's not too cheap, but it's not crazy, crazy expensive either. Definitely. Yeah. And, you can, and it's all about, obviously, seeing 
the actual designer's previous work. Because mm. you can't... Uh, the guys on Fiverr, I'm pretty sure they will take a 200 quid if you offered it to them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's seeing their previous work and sometimes actually contacting previous clients. Yeah. So the guys on their portfolio say, hey, how did this logo actually work for you? Was it suitable? That's how true. was it working with this potential individual? Yeah. To actually not waste your money. Cause yeah, we, we had an interesting story. There's a guy that was in the show called Oliver, a couple mm -hmm. of like, uh, maybe 18 months ago he was in the show. <laughs> yeah. And he well funded, right? And the business is going well, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he wanted to get a new logo done. So he went to one like, huge design agency in Shoreditch. And, and it was like between eight and 10,000 pounds mm -hmm. to do like a logo branding redesign. Massive, about, right? Yeah. I was like, look, whatever you do, I'm an electric bike company. Don't do a lightning bolt, mm -hmm. right? Because there's lightning bolts in every electric company. I want to be different than once and I just don't do a lightning bolt. So they went off six weeks later, they were come in for the presentation, sir, blah, blah, blah. Get you like a fancy espresso and a nice cup and sit down and be up the presentation and it was his name with a lightning bolt <laughs> six, six weeks later. But it just goes to show like it's it's crazy money. But you yeah. know, and I have no doubt that those uh, creatives spent days yeah. in a room a and then and they come up with a lightning bolt, you know. But this is the stuff you hear. Well look, we're we're about to run out of time. Yeah. If someone wants to find out more and get in touch, where can they go? Um just contact starttech.com, S T A R T T E C K dot com. And uh, you can follow me on my personal page, which is at D U N G U B W O K. Cool, good stuff. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the next four years brings. Yeah, yeah. We'll probably hopefully meet up in a big office. Yeah, like exactly. Cheers, Paul. <laughs> Thanks a million. Thank Appreciate it. Thanks a million. <laughs> Amazing.